video 58 of the master course quantum chemistry of molecular electromagnetic properties. The topic of this lecture is the clamp nucleus treatment. In the last lecture, we applied the external electric field to vibronic wave functions, meaning to the wave function which depends on electronic and nuclear coordinates. And after deriving expressions for the properties like the polarizability which was the example we considered with perturbation theory then in the final perturbation the expression we made the Bonhoeffer approximation in this lecture we will do it slightly different we will first make the Bonhoeffer approximation and then apply the perturbation to both the electronic wave function and the nuclear wave function and then look at expression for the uh, properties so first of all, we write the vibronic wave function as the product of an electronic wave function and a nuclear wave function, as we actually already did it in uh, chapter two, right in the beginning of the book. And then we will apply uh, the external perturbation to, in the first place, to the electronic Hamiltonian. Because when treating a system in the Born-Oppmann approximation, one first solves the electronic problem and then later on the vibration problem. And that's what we're also going to do here. So we, we include the external perturbation and electric field here now to the electronic Hamiltonian. And then we can use the norm perturbation theory expression, which we already had in uh, chapter three, I think chapter three, two, for the first order correction to the electronic wave function. So here we have the electronic wave function as a function of the external electric field where we have the unperturbed wave function and a first order correction. And the first order correction looks precisely as we had it before in chapter three, where here are electronic excited states. So these are just electronic wave functions. And this is the energy of the electronic excited state at the uh, same nuclear position at the same geometry as the electronic, uh, as the ground state energy. And here we have our perturbation operator, which is the electronic dipole moment operator and the nuclear dipole moment operator, and here the corresponding component of the external electric field. In addition to the wave function, we can also look at the electronic energy in the presence of the field at a particular uh, geometry, of course, and expand that also in perturbation theory, as we have done in, in uh, chapter three. On perturbation theory, we have the uh, unperturbed energy at this geometry, and we uh, include the first order correction here. So I stop again after the first order correction. And the first order correction, you know, is, um, is expectation value with the unperturbed wave function and our first order Hamiltonian. Now the first order Hamiltonian consists of an electronic part and a nuclear part, but because we're only dealing here with the electronic wave functions, of course, the nuclear part we can take out of the integral and which gives just this value. And here we have the expect expectation value of the electronic part. Now we can recognize from uh, chapter four that um, this expectation value together with this one here is actually just the permanent electric dipole moment. So our energy in the presence of electric field to first order is the unperturbed energy plus or minus actually, minus the scalar product of the dipole moment and the external electric field. Now, when doing the Bonhoeffer approximation after solving the electronic problem, one then um, solves the nuclear problem. And the nuclear problem has, of course, uh, the nuclear Schrodinger equation has the nuclear kinetic energy operator and it has a potential energy op operator. Now, the potential energy operator or the potential energy for the nuclear motion is just the electronic energy. So in our case, in the perturbed case, it's going to be this expression. So we have the unperturbed en electronic energy plus our first order correction to the, to the energy. So that's our potential energy now for the nuclear motion. And as a solution, we will get uh, then perturbed vibration wave functions and we will get uh, perturbed uh, uh, vibrational energies. So how are we going to solve this uh, now perturbed nuclear problem? Well, um, what we have here in the parentheses, of course, is the Hamiltonian for the uh, nuclear problem. And um, the first two parts together are the unperturbed Hamiltonian. So this one is actually our uh, perturbation in the Hamiltonian for the nuclear motion. So it's the first order correction to the Hamiltonian to the nuclear Hamiltonian. 
And then again, we use perturbation D in the normal way. So if you want to know what the wave function is, or if you want to expand the wave function, we're going to expand this uh, electric field dependent wave function. Again, the perturbation here, so we have a zero order uh, wave, nuclear wave function, and we have a first order correction. And the expression for the first order correction is precisely the same as we had it for the electronic in chapter three, and for the vibronic wave function, we had it in uh, actually the last uh, chapter, the first chapter of uh, chapter eight. <clears throat> so we have again now here a sum of all excited uh, vibrational wave functions, and then uh, we have uh, vibrational energy, energy difference between the the ground state or the state we're actually looking at. They haven't restricted it to the ground state, but a state V, and all the other states. And up there we have a uh, a transition moment like normally from the state we're looking at and all the other states and our first order uh, operator. And this first op op operator here is the electric dipole moment of the molecule, but the electric dipole moment as a function of uh, the nuclear uh, position as a function of the geometry of the molecule. Because the variables here in this vibrational wave function, or nuclear wave function, are of course the positions, position vectors of the nuclei. So we need to know the dipole moment as a function of the position of the nuclei. Now, now we have an expression for a perturbed vibrational function, wave function. We had one before for the perturbed electronic wave function. And with those together, now we can look at the polarizability. And now, in contrast to chapter 8, one, we want to use a different expression for the polarizability. We now want to use this expression, but as we had it derived in chapter 4 from uh, static response theory, where um, a component of the polarizability is a derivative of the first order, first order correction to the dipole moment in the presence of um, a field. So we have a perturbed wave function and we have the dipole moment operator and the perturbed wave function is the first order correction. And here we have still the vibronic wave functions. But now we can insert our uh, von Oppenheimer approximation, so we can insert that we express them as the product of an electronic and a vibration wave function. So that's the first thing. So we can insert our expansion for the vibrational wave function in the presence of an electric field and the expansion of our electronic wave function in the presence of electric field. But since we're only interested, I mean, we have to take the derivative of the first order terms. And that means since, since we insert now here product that we either have to have a first order electronic wave function because if I have a first order electronic wave function here, then this expectation value is going to be first order or I have a first order vibrational wave function, because then it's also going to be first order. And I can have it in the pra here, or I can have it in the cat, which means we actually get four terms. And um, in each of this term, one of the four wave functions, two in the pra as a product and two in the cat as a product, one of them is going to be first order. That's first order terms. And here I've written it down uh, more explicitly. I mean, the our first order correction to the vibronic wave function, since we are already dealing with, since we made already the bono approximation and write the vibronic wave function as a product, then our first order correction to the vibronic wave function is going to be a product of a electronic wave functions and a nuclear wave function. And since we are looking for first order, it's so either going to be the electronic going to be first order or the nuclear is going to be first order. So we have these four terms here. And now we can insert the expressions which we derived for the first order correction to the either electronic or vibrational wave function. And there, of course, there's a sum over all the unperturbed states with those coefficients. So we get sum over states expressions again. And uh, in principle, we get four, but we can combine them to two. So we get a factor of and two of them because two are actually equivalent. So we get one, uh, and that is uh, this one here where we had the first order vibrational wave function. Therefore, we, here we have a sum over all the other vibrational states as we get it here. And if we compare this with the expression which we had in chapter 8.1, this is exactly just the pure vibrational polarizability. So actually, although we start differently, we get the same pure vibration co uh, correction to the uh, polarizability. The other one, the one where we now have the first order electronic wave function, however, is different. 
uh, and this is this term, uh, because this, if you look at it, actually it's just a vibrationally average electronic polarizability, because we have the vibrational uh, zero order wave function, and then we have a first order electronic wave function, which gives us this expression here, and which turns out to be just a normal expression for the polarizability when we only look at the electronic wave functions. So what we're going to do, we have the electronic, the normal polarizability, electronic polarizability, evaluated at a particular geometry, because the energies here are the electronic energies for the ground state and all the excited states, but evaluated at the same geometry. So we have here the polarizability at this particular geometry, and then we average this, then we have to calculate the expectation value of this polarizability as a function of the geometry over the vibration wave function, the unperturbed vibration wave function, which also are functions of this geometry, which means we need to know vibration wave function, and we need to know the sort of surface, the polarizability surface, the polarizability as a function of uh, um, nuclear positions. So compared with the sum of states treatment in the last chapter, we get the same vibrational, pure vibration polarizability, but we, we get a different um, electronic uh, contribution. Let's compare those two uh, more explicitly. Here we have the one from the clamp nucleus treatment, and here is what we ended up with at the end uh, as the electronic vibration polarizability from the sum of states treatment, but already making this approximation that we ignore the different uh, um, vibrational states in the excited electronic states. If you compare them now, so let's see what, what the differences are. Uh, I mean, in both cases, we have to sum over all the uh, excited electronic states. Um, but whereas up here in the result from the clamped nucleus treatment, we basically, we, we have the electronic polarizability, and we have to take average that over the vibrational, uh, unperturbed vibrational wave function. In the expression from the sum over states treatment, however, it's just the transition moments up here, which we have to average over the vibrational wave function. I mean, and if I say average over the vibrational wave function, I mean calculate the integral um, of this uh, quantity as a function of nuclear positions, integrated with the vibrational wave function. Whereas down here in the denominator, we have um, the energies of particular vibrational states. Here the um, vibrational state in the electronic ground state, and here the ground state vibration state in all the excited electronic states. The big advantage of the clamp nucleus treatment expression, of course, is that here we have to average a property which we easily can calculate, I mean, which we can calculate from, from response theory. Whereas here, we actually need to calculate explicit energies, which we don't need there, because uh, um, the polarizability is just a particular response function. We only have to evaluate it at many different geometries, but we don't need to calculate all excited electronic states and transition moments. And that's the case, what one would have to do in this sum of states treatment. And that is the reason that in practice, uh, this sum of states treatments actually is not used. What uh, is used in practice is the uh, Klimt nucleus treatment up here. And in the next lecture, we're going to look at how we actually can calculate this in practice.